Don't be shy. Okay. How about vendors or agencies? Oh. Okay, any media? Okay, just helps me understand who all's here, so great. Um, just to let you guys know as well, my name is Vanessa St. Diegas. I am the Director of Social Media Planning and Integration at Hilton Worldwide. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our structure and how we've empowered the organization to function in a minute. Um, hopefully most of you know many of our brands up here. A lot of people don't realize that they all sit under one house of brands. So we have quite a number. We've got about 10 brands. Um, ranging from luxury all the way to timeshare. So Waldorf and Conrad, Hilton, Doubletree, Embassy, Hilton Garden, Hampton, Homewood, Home 2, and Hilton Grand Vacations. So this is really great when we talk about social media programming because we have a lot of brands to test on, a lot of different customer segments to work with. So we've been able to do a lot of experimentation in the space. So I don't know how you guys are feeling right now. Your mind may be a little bit overwhelmed with the content coming through the program. You know, there's a lot going on in the space today. Everyone's competing for our attention as consumers, as marketers and communicators. We're constantly trying to break through the clutter and trying to make sure our message has, you know, relevance to the consumer and is important to them. But the question continues to be how to do this. And I really love that I followed the gamification panel, a lot of what they said about, you know, gamification has always been here. It's so true. You used to collect stamps to take it in to get your prize. Well, social has always been here. Digital has always been here in a certain way. It's just changing. So how can we take those existing fundamentals and move them into the new space? And the reality is hospitality is social. So for us, being a hospitality company, this is great. Many of you probably traveled into New York yesterday for the event, so you likely checked into your hotel. Hopefully you were greeted by a warm smile. Maybe the bellman took your bag up to the room, told you about a few of his favorite things to do in the city. And then if you're like me, you probably went straight to the lobby, got a coffee, caught up on email. And if you look in the lobby, you realize everyone's interacting, you know, whether it's small talk or friends meeting up or business partners meeting to, you know, discuss business. There are social interactions going on. So a couple of years ago when social media was, you know, becoming the, the buzzword, um, we were really excited about it because we realized our hotels have always been social centers, so we're used to this. How do we relate that experience digitally? How do we participate in a way that makes sense for us, um, given that this is one of our core competencies that we offer, being a social center? We did some research to just figure out where our guests were, and I would highly recommend for those of you um, in the audience that haven't done this to research your own guests. You can listen to all the stats you want about how many people are on Facebook, Twitter, Foursquare, what have you. If it's not your guest or your customer in your face, sorry, it really doesn't mean anything to you. So you need to know where your customers are and perspective, of course. So we did a social graphic study with Forrester. It was a uh, completely customized study built off of their technographic study, and we asked all the questions that we wanted to know about our guests in social. Where were they? What motivated them? Did they want to interact with us? If they did, why? You know, what did we have to offer them in this space? So a few things that we realized was that our guests are extremely social, so that was good for us. Um, extremely active, in some cases even more active than we had anticipated, and it was really interesting to see by brand a lot of us have misconceptions about our customers and where they are. And we saw some surprising stats of which brands were more social than others. They expected us to be active, listening and responding. So this was um, a little over a year ago. So of course this year I think all the focus has been on um, customer service and building up customer service and a lot of research done on that. But you know, given the time frame, this was still kind of you know, while in your gut you knew, okay, people want us to listen and help them, this was still a little bit newsworthy internally. So this confirmed the need to not only be active, but to participate and listen to them and help them. So of course we just heard about deals, which continue to be one of the main factors uh, in social media that I think a lot of people try to grow their organic followings. Um, but our guests also told us they wanted customers uh, or customer service and travel advice. So obviously we're a hotel company, we are all around the world, we have all this knowledge, we should be able to share it, and they wanted to partake in that. So we set out on a plan to empower our, our organization to take part in social. And the way that we set it up was we knew that in order to scale this, we had to take a decentralized model. So a lot of big companies that you talk to actually take a very centralized model, everything's done at the hub, 
we actually are pretty decentralized. We have a hub and spoke model, but at the hub we focus on our training, you know, policies, tools that can go out to the rest of the organization and empower them to act in social on their own. We have a cross-functional social media committee, which I lead, so that group is responsible for driving the organization forward, um, for looking ahead, you know, staying on top of trends and telling the organization this is the way that we want to go. And then importantly here, we really wanted to empower activation at all levels. So we have about 4,000 hotels worldwide. A lot of vendors I talk to get really nervous and they think, wow, that's scary. You let all you know, 4,000 hotels activate in social. Well, of course not all 4,000 are activated globally, but there are a lot activated. And we really believed in social at the local level. We think that's where the relevancy is. So we really wanted to empower that activation and give them the tools to use it. So this is one of our tools that we have internally. Um, it's a little social media website that all the hotels can go to, any department, brand, resource, anyone can go to and has access to it. Um, it has tons of resources including how-to checklists, roles and responsibilities, best practices, as well as the KPIs and measurement. And if, as you look at the screenshot, you might be able to see the two parts that are really highlighted are the policy and the strategy. So obviously any social media program starts with a social media policy. If anyone doesn't have one, which I'm sure everyone in this room has a social media policy, but if you don't, um, that would definitely be step one. And if you're a global organization like us, you have to think about translations as well. And then, of course, creating a strategy. So we really wanted to communicate to them, you know, be careful about just offering these deals or, you know, incentivizing this communication. What are you looking for in social? Really think through the strategy. Um, that's what we did with our brands, and we took that process all the way to the hotel. So everyone is thinking through a strategy before engaging. So we activated at the brand level. Um, you know, every brand is activated in some case on some channel. Um, this is just a few examples. And then we also activated at the hotel level. So like I said, our hotels are out there watching social media, watching what people are saying about them, servicing the guests if possible, um, you know, really interacting with the guests one-on-one. -on -one. But we still felt like we were missing something. We'd done all this training, we'd done all this activation, we were onto something, we felt like we were you know, gliding with the trends, going where we were supposed to go, but just something kept seeming to be missing from this whole program. And the reality was we weren't thinking holistically about our vision. Our vision when Conrad Hilton started this company some 90 years ago was to fill the world with the light and warmth of hospitality. And I know that might sound a little corny, but I actually really am impassioned by this vision. I think it's wonderful. And this is something that as hoteliers we do every day. We go out in the world, we try to greet people with a smile, we try to be hospitable, we try to help them. And we were doing that to a certain extent in social, but let's be real, when you're out there advocating for your page or your community, come visit us here. Like I said, a lot of people are using deals, a lot of people are talking about themselves. So we really wanted to be authentic. We really wanted to be hospitable and build a plan around that, but we weren't quite sure what it could look like. We finally decided upon building a plan to proactively build personal relationships through trusted, authentic recommendations of what to do well in a market. And what this means is those 4,000 properties worldwide I mentioned, they're in cities all over the world. We have team members all over the world with all this knowledge that live in those cities, they're locals, they know what to do, and they want to help. And we saw a need for this. We saw people tweeting. You know, I'm in New York today, where's the best place to get a slice of pizza? I'm in Orlando, what can I do besides Disney? And no one was really answering them. So we really wanted to offer them an answer that was authentic, it wasn't salesy. This is something that you would go to your best friend and say, I'm coming to, to LA, you live there, tell me what to do. It had to be, you know, real genuine. And the question was just, who were we going to reach in doing this? So an example of who, who we thought we could reach and who we have since found we are reaching, um, you know, take Laura, she's from Birmingham, she's a busy mom, she's traveling to DC with her family, she's fairly new to Twitter, she's only following her friends and family and they're following her, and she happens to be an honors member, so she's part of our loyalty program, so very valuable to the company. So Laura is traveling to DC, she's probably going to tweet, you know, what can I do in DC that's kid friendly, looking for a place. If one of her followers isn't in DC or has never been to DC with kids, they're not going to be able to offer her any value, and that's where we can come in. Similarly, Alex moved to London from New York. He's in a new city. He's trying to explore it. He's never stayed with us. That's fine. We can still be hospitable to Alex. We can still help him. Maybe one day he'll be in the market looking for a hotel. He'll want to stay with Hilton. 
Or maybe he'll just tell all his friends, you know, this is really cool. Hilton came out of their way to offer me suggestions to explore my new city without any strings attached. I'm not a loyalty member. I'm not staying with them. They just did it out of the kindness of their heart. Josh, sales manager from Atlanta. So Josh is fantastic for us to reach because he travels every week. So we have a really good opportunity that if we help him, he may stay with us more, or maybe even for the first time if he's never been. Lucky for us, Josh has been at Hilton's a few times. So he travels every week and tries to fit in some, you know, uh, sightseeing while he's in these cities. And we can help him, you know, depending on what cities he's going to, we can offer him a recommendation. And he may say, I want to stay at more Hilton's in the future. They helped me. I want to stay with them. But how are we going to scale this? So we had this idea. We want to help all these people. The reality is, who is going to do this? You all probably know social media budgets are tight. Social media resourcing is extremely hard to get. If you've got one person, I applaud you because that is no small feat. Um, so when you think about offering this great service, we needed someone to do this. And that's where our employees came in. Through that training that I had told you about and activating all those hotels and social, time and time again, we had individuals come to us and said, you know, my hotel is active in social. It's run by the marketing team. I'm in HR. I'm really passionate about social. I want to help this company move forward. What can I do? And we didn't have anything for them to do. So we had this list of people that kept coming to us. And when I joined the company, it's like they found me in the directory, and they looked me up, and they'd call me, and they'd say, I really love social media. I want to help. Tell me how I can help. So we already had a few individuals identified, but we needed more. And we decided that we were going to go this route of in-field uh, employees empowered to advocate on behalf of the Hilton Worldwide brand. So they were empowered to service our guests with extensive market knowledge online as well as offline. So they already knew their cities. They already knew what to do. They were passionate about Hilton, passionate about our guests, and we were just going to utilize their services. So who are these employee advocates? Well, this is Lucy. This is one example. Lucy is one of my favorite examples because she's actually in a marketing function at Hilton Worldwide, but she's not in a marketing function that actually interacts in social. So she's uber passionate about social. She's constantly educating me on things that are going on in the marketplace. And she's an avid Twitter user. And she was just sitting there, raising her hand. I'm desperate to interact. Help me find a way to interact. And so she was one person that, of course, we were able to call on and say, OK, Lucy, we, we have something that we want you to do. Bob, he's a front office manager, not something that you would typically find in a position interacting in social media. But he's been extremely awesome at helping our guests. He's very passionate about our guests anyway. He was actually an occasional Twitter user. He'd only used it a couple times when I brought him onto the program, and I said I would teach him everything he needed to know. Um, a couple people were brand new to Twitter. I didn't care. I said, I can't teach you passion for your city. I can't teach you passion for our guests. I can teach you Twitter. No problem. And Shauna, the same. She's an HR manager, so again, not something that you would see interacting in social. Very passionate about Orlando. Orlando has this stigma of there's only Disney. Um, so she was really excited to be able to share with, you know, anyone that she could all the exciting things that Orlando has to offer besides Disney. So we ended up fulfilling this program in 13 markets. We identified them by high tourism markets. So these are cities that get a lot of travelers, you know, business and leisure alike. They're also a little more tech focused, so there was a high tweet volume in each of these cities. Um, so this is the list that we went to. And while we're not everywhere, you know, we are starting to get tweets as the program ramps up. You know, someone was tweeting to us. Um, we actually started the conversation in Austin, and that's how we picked up on it. But they were actually driving across country, and so we were helping them all the way across, across country. So we obviously have the resources to help anyone in any market, but these are the ones that we are focused on.